Hello and uh, welcome to the Requester Build episode 4, I believe it is. Uh, today I will be looking at MFFS, which is the uh, Shields mod, which was been added to Tekkit um, recently. Um, I recorded all this footage this afternoon, but uh, when I went to render it, I realized that I didn't turn my sound folders on. So I am currently watching back my footage and speaking over it so that I can upload it um, all together. So basically all I've got here is I've got three medium voltage solar panels with fiber optic cable for glass, fiber optic, whatever you want to call it, coming out. I'm just making it daytime now because it's getting a bit dark. Nip the bird. And in this box I have everything you're going to need for the MFFS mod. So you can power it with any industrial power. Um, it just goes through um, one of the blocks. It goes through. I got all the update, all the uh, upgrades there. Force field core, area projector. Uh, I'm not going to be covering that uh, because it's just another version of the projector. Um, the MMF, the MFFS area projector projects the shield all around you and the EU injector. Okay, so the EU injector is what allows you to power the entire thing. That is the recipe there. Electrolyzed water cells, along with uh, refined iron, a bat box, some copper wiring, the, the recipe is there. Okay, so uh, the area projector is the uh, electronic circuits, electrolyzed water, frequency, and some diamonds. And uh, yeah, and the last one is the force field core. So this is what goes in the middle. And that's the recipe for you there. Um, just trying to foresee what I'm going to be doing on the screen. Um, okay, so what we've got here is an MFFS card. Sorry, I have to pronounce it every time or I'm going to do it wrong. This is blank. These things are really easy to make. And you need one of these every time you want to make um, anything with MFFS. <laughs> oh, God, that's going to get old very, very quickly. Um, so you probably don't need this kind of power, you probably only need one of these, depending on how often you're going to have the shield up. So what I've done there is I've put the EU uh, injector on the bottom, and that is where the power goes in. Then I'm putting the core on top of that. Then you're going to put your projector of choice, I'm using the area projector, I really suggest using the area projector, it is the best, on top. The other one is like a directional projector, it's just not as good. Um, then all you got to do is take your blank cards and put it in the core and what that does is it sets the card to the core if you've ever used the um, the build craft um, I think it's called the builder I think it is builder when you you sort of like record your building onto a blank piece of paper that's almost like what this is and then you place it into the thing into the projector at the top and it links the two together so like now that projector is knows it's linked to that core because you can actually separate the projector from the core and have it somewhere else but I've put it there because always you won't have both protected so now all you gotta do is stick a lever on the core and turn it on and you'll get your shield uh, you can preset the shield here, so that's your power going in. Uh, when that goes down low, you want to you want to worry. And this is your settings here. So I've currently got it on cube, uh, which is create a cube. You want to turn it off before you try to change it. Uh, you got cube or sphere. Sphere will create an entire sphere around you. Cube will create a box, a uh, cube. That is the radius from the projector that you want it to be. So you can see I've made it sphere and I've made it bigger. So now it's a sphere. And it will go as far as the ground and then it will stop. If you break away the ground, it will replace it, which I'll show in a minute. So, so yeah, that's the sphere and I've set it. The, what's worth noting is you cannot break through these, even if you're in o, uh, even if you're an OP. Even if you're an admin or whatever, you cannot break through these. And if you break away the ground below it, as you can see, it just instantly replaces it. So it will find empty places and fill it with the shield. So you can't have like an archway or whatever as a way of getting in and out because it will just fill the gap in the arch. What you can do though is you can place doors. Uh, you have to turn it off before you can do this or is it will just do that. It will replace the block that you get rid of. So make figure out where your block, where the shield ends and mark it up and then check yourself down the door. So doors will actually work because they count as an entity block. So it thinks there's a block there because there is but you can open a door and walk through it. So this is what you will use to get 
in and out. Okay, I'm back with a lever for my door. I just realized that I didn't have a lever on me. So we're just picking up where we left off here. I'm just going to shove a block down there and place a lever on it like that. So as you can see, when I activate it, it stops above the door as if it was a block. But when I flick this switch, you can see that the door opens, but it doesn't fill the gap because it's still an entity there. It doesn't fill it with the shield. So that is how you would go about getting in and out of your shield without having to bring it up and down. So you could maybe have a password protection on it or something like that. You know, that's for you to decide what you want to do with that information. But that is how doors work in relation to the shield itself. So all I'm doing here is I'm just checking the power and uh, showing you my settings. So let's have a look at some of the upgrades. So we've got force field zapper upgrade. Um, I think we're going to do that one first. So I'll just shove that in my inventory there. So I'm just trying to commentate as I do because, as I explained before. Um, so all you have to do is second click the add-on onto the core itself and it will work. It's just like, it's like a nuclear reactor. So as you can see, the shield itself has changed color now. And normally the add-on block, you see there, changes color, changes animation. That's the recipe there. It's advanced alloys with a Tesla coil in the middle. That's a Tesla coil. So you can normally see if it's working because as it I put it on, you can see it go yellow. So you can it indicates that it is active, as you can see. So what these do is, if I walk through the shield, I take a lot of damage. So what these do is, they create a punishment for players trying to get through these shields. They do a, a hell of a lot of damage, and I'm wearing full diamond armor. So if you know, if I wasn't, that would just be insta kill. Um, what I'm going to do next is the camouflage upgrade. I love this upgrade. This upgrade basically takes on the appearance of a block of your choice. So as you can see, it's still exactly the same shield. Oh, didn't mean to do that. But uh, you can make it look like any block you want. So I'm going to turn it into wood here. I'm going to put a wood plank where that block is. Okay. It says it recognizes it with the OK. Turn it off, turn it back on again, and boom. You've got a force field that acts exactly like a force field. But it looks like whatever you want. Now this still can't break, much like a shield. So if you try to break it, see, it will still won't break. So it functions exactly like a shield, but you can have it look like anything you want. Uh, so I'm going to turn that off now, and it goes away instantly, just like that. Uh, so that's your camouflage upgrade. There, I love that one. That's my personal favourite. Okay, uh, the next one we're going to do is the... Uh, force field range upgrade. Now this one doesn't really get used much in my opinion. I've never used it. All this does is it lets um, the distance between the core and the projector have a bigger gap. Okay, So all it is is you could have that projector further away from the activation but I always have it on top of it anyway because it, protect, it protects um, the actual button itself or is it would be kind of pointless. Um, it also, I believe, increases the range that you can have the actual shield at. I, 32 is the limit. It may increase that citation needed. All I know is it increases the frequency range between the core and the projector. So let's get rid of that one. That's the recipe for that one. Like I said, I don't really use it very often, but you may find a use for it. So if you wanted to have your projector independent to your core, if you wanted to have the core switch in your house, but have the projector somewhere else, you can do that. But obviously the core itself wouldn't be protected, so that's why I do it like this. So yeah, okay. Uh, just waiting to see what I'm going to do next. As you can see, there's text coming up because I'm doing it on the live server. Force field dome upgrade. Okay, now this is quite an interesting one. This one, when you put it on to the machine, will make the dome only go as far down as the projector. Um, it won't go all the way down to block level. It'll only go as far down as the projector is. So um, if you wanted uh, to be able to dig underneath the shield to have an entrance or something like that. Any any reason why you'd need a dome. So as you can see here, it stops on level with the projector. I mean, I don't know what you could use that for, but you know, the end possibilities are endless. Whatever you would require a dome for that you didn't want to go down if you wanted to dig a hole underneath it. The thing is, if you've got rooms underground and you have a sphere, it's going to fill those available spaces with shields. So if you wanted it just to stop at a certain level, then you would use the dome upgrade. So you know, it's pretty it's pretty useful. This is the recipe for it here. Advanced oils, electronic circuits. So that's the recipe for it. Quite a useful uh, add-on. One of my personal favorites. Just switch that off before we move on to the next one. So the next one is force field underwater. This is great. Basically what this does is it removes all water within the shield. So if you put this at the bottom of the ocean and then activated it, it would remove all the water. So I'm just going to go get some water blocks. 
Okay, I'm back with some water, and as you can see, I've just plunked it on top of that uh, glowstone block there. So when I activate this, it will remove the water. Boom, just like that. So if you were to put this at the bottom of the ocean, it would remove all the water. So you can use this as like underwater cities without having to build it bit by bit and slowly remove every water source block that's there. I don't know if you've ever done that before, but I have, and it is painful. To sit there and remove every source block with a block is painful. And it's great, because you look down, you can see the water stopping, and people have put like glowstone blocks underneath, so it's like a glowing underwater city. And if you're looking up from inside, you just see water just like stopped on the dome. It looks amazing. Um, that is like probably one of the ones I see used most on the servers I play on. It's just an amazing addition to these shields. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just like, if you want to make an underwater city, it's an absolute must. Um, it's just amazing. Um, I'm just going to remove this one now. Okay, and we'll see what we'll... This, that's the recipe for it. Advanced alloy with an empty bucket. It's quite fitting, really, because it removes water. So, quite metaphorical there. Uh, last one is the force field block cutter upgrade. Now, this one, it's got its uses, but it's quite dangerous. What this does is... It actually breaks the blocks that get in the way of the shield. So as you can see, it's currently set on sphere. So that's going in the big sphere underneath me. You just can't see it. And it's removed all the blocks that are in the way. And as you can see, it's just got rid of the door. It's got rid of the lever. It's got rid of everything. Anything that gets in the way gets broken. I mean, this is great if you want to make like a, 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 a like a, a tunnel. You know, if you wanted to make a tunnel from one house to the other, go underground, get the directional um, projector, which I'm not showing here, and just boom, activate it, increase the size, and it'll just destroy all the blocks in the way, and they'll all just drop on the floor. You know, I've seen people basically use them as mining drills to, to cut big tunnels away, or, you know, it can be used for so many different things, the possibilities are endless. So yeah, that's, I mean, just an amazing upgrade. What a, a really, really good one. Um, so yeah, that's been... Uh, that's been the MFFS uh, tutorial, I guess. Um, all I'm doing here is I'm just putting the directional one on just to show you uh, before I end the video. Um, quite a bit more fiddly than the projector because it's a directional use. Um, it works exactly the same way as the projector, so the linking that I showed you before works exactly the same way. And it's just all about how you place it on top and the orientation controls which direction it faces. It's just as simple as that. So this has been a tutorial on MFFS is mods. If you want me to see, if you want to see me using these mods for other things, maybe like if you want me to show you how to do the tunnel bore um, build with it, then leave a comment below. Uh, if you like what you see and you want to see more, then subscribe. Check out the server because it is currently running. Um, and yeah, I've been DCY Stezo. Have a nice evening.